Greetings, greetings, family, sister Shanice in the house. I am now live and direct and absolutely delighted uh, to be with you this Wednesday evening. My, my, my. Problems again, <laughs> trying to get in via Zoom. So I've had to come in uh, via StreamYard instead. Uh, but I'm here. Apologies for uh, being just a little bit later than I would normally be uh, at this time of the evening. So welcome, welcome to the Sister Shanice Show. It's going to be another fantastic, bombastic show. I was speaking with Dr. Winters backstage just a short while ago. He is going to be logging on again via this new link because we had some challenges with the old link. Okay, I can see him in the background, so let me just add him uh, to the stream. I welcome him on board. So, greetings, greetings, Dr. Winters. Here we are, <laughs> locked out of uh, the other Zoom, but in via this link. How yeah, are you doing here? today? I'm doing <clears throat> very well, thank you. Absolutely delighted to be seeing you looking so well. How's your day been so far? <laughs> my day's uh, my day's been great. It's a nice day. It's, it's warm last week. It's going to get cooler, but it's warm now. Okay, so back, fantastic. Back warm. Yeah. So were you affected by the hurricanes and these really awful winds that we were hearing about in America? Uh, no, that was uh, that was basically down south and on the east coast. Oh, I'm in the Midwest, so I'm in the middle of the nation. Okay. You know, so I will get in some dark clouds, you know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're glad that you weren't having to tolerate that sort of really awful. Well, you weather. know, uh, you know the hurricanes, the hurricane, the uh, hurricanes they begin uh, where the slave trade began. So oh. uh, that's that's just God. That's just God kicking them up. Mess with the white folks, you know. <laughs> and Marcus Garvey in the wind. Didn't he say he'd be back in the wind? That's it. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Blowing up some gals. Yes, indeed. Well, Dr. Winters, I'm delighted to say that the family is coming in the house. They're dropping us some messages in the chat. Thank you so, so much. Welcome, welcome, each and every one of you. Uh, KZ saying greetings. Oh, welcome. Greetings, Black Hat you. Okay, so good to have you in the house. Uh, Adrian, uh, Zachary, Richmond, Sister Afri Jammer, all the way from Ghana. Welcome. Uh, Adrian's bigging you up, uh, Dr. Winters. Uh, we've got Farrell in the house as well. Oh, fantastic. The family's coming in through the door. Let us know where in the world you are viewing us from. You know, it's always, always fantastic to know where in the world our viewers are. Well, uh, family, family, I just want to let you know that uh, we are on about week 13 of our uh, research course with Dr. Winters. And my, 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 it's taken over my life. But I'm enjoying it so much. The research has been absolutely phenomenal. I have like been learning so much. I'm reading books that I otherwise would not have been reading. I'm doing research. I've got a structured methodology now. For doing the research from an archaeological, a linguistic, an anthropological, uh, from a documentation, a legal and geological perspective. So, no say after this course, when I come here, I come correct family. So, I want to thank you, Dr. Winters, for the wonderful course that you've put together. I'm so happy that you know I am on your course. Uh, and uh, working my way towards becoming, you know, uh, a, a more proficient researcher. I wonder if you'd like to just share, you know, for a couple of minutes as our audience come through the door, a bit of information about this wonderful course that you've put together and why you felt it necessary to create this Africated research course. Okay, well, uh, what happened is this, is that, uh, you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> what I felt is that a lot of people, they, they really don't know how to do the research. You know, many people, many people believe that you had to get a college degree and all that, but they don't understand that, that people like uh, John Jackson, Jay Rogers, you know, these people, and, and uh, these people were great, were great researchers in terms of uh, mm -hmm. African, Afro-American history, British history, ancient history. And they didn't, they didn't have a PhD. They didn't have a BA. They had, maybe they had a high school diploma, 
But what it was is that they were interested in, in illustrating the past. And so I developed this research program so that I could uh, so that I could help people to become be able to do research. Okay, uh, what you find is that you see people like Temple University in uh, the United States. This is the leading university where they train black scholars uh, and black scholars can get a PhD in African studies. But if you notice, even though these people may get a PhD in African studies, they never write another article in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't do any publications. They mm -hmm. just get that degree. <clears throat> and one of the reasons they, they don't do any research is that they don't know how to do the research. Uh -huh. So but in this class, I try to teach people how to do the research and how to look at it from a more a, a better perspective. I used to teach, uh, I taught research for about 10 years, but my class is only eight weeks. But this class, I was teaching educational research, quantitative and qualitative. But see, my class is 15 weeks. And the reason it's 15 weeks is, is that I want the students who take my class to know how to interpret anthropological literature, mm -hmm. linguistic literature, genetic mm -hmm. literature, historical mm -hmm. literature, and, mm -hmm. and sociological literature. So mm -hmm. I want them to be able to, to read the literature and be able in a sense to understand where people are coming from. You know, uh, Sister Shanice, she's been a super student. She made up a survey. And I hope uh, <clears throat> I hope some of you guys, if you if you find the opportunity, send her your email address. Mm -hmm. Don't really fill up the yet. Uh, send her your email address and request a copy of the survey so that you can get as many people as possible to uh, fulfill her survey. She's uh, and and okay. she's a very dynamic student, very very very, you know, interesting. She, she's working on a topic now. I'm not going to talk about until she's complete, until she completes it. But you guys are going to be surprised. And so again, as I said, is that the research course is aimed at anybody who wants to do research who can read and write. Because I'm going to tell you, in the United States, you you basically you basically learn how to read. You basically learn how to read and write between uh, the what we call the sixth to eighth grade. When you go to high school, all you do is learn literature. You don't learn how to write. So most mm -hmm. people have learned how to write if they're going to be able to write by the time they uh, before they even get to high school. So again, mm -hmm. uh, this class is aimed at making it possible for people to know how to do research and to uh, illustrate their past and. Uh, one of the things that makes it so good is that this class was aimed at the Baradanaks. And the Baradanaks are the people in uh, in England and uh, the United Kingdom and uh, the Caribbean. And the reason it was aimed at the Baradanaks is that it's at an earlier time. Usually I do it in the evening in the States. But to make sure that we develop these Baradanak scholars, Baradanak is the uh, name for, for Black people in Britain that goes back to their ancest ancestral name. Because see, the thing is, this is that 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 Britain was ruled and controlled by black people, and they they were followers of Ra. So uh, they, you know, they were sun worshippers and things like that. They were Phoenicians, they were Egyptians, and so then many of them came from West Africa. And so then, what we're going to talk about is is how to how to how to get this history, recover this history, and make it possible for you guys to know. The history of the Baradan Acts, the foundation of Black Britons. Yeah, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Family, family. You know, I went to school, college, and university here in the UK, and I never learned anything about this history. And we have a huge amount of history here in the UK, England, and the British Isles that has just been hidden. It's just been swept underneath the carpet, you know, and as I'm doing the research using the techniques that uh, I've learned on Dr. Winters' course, I'm just think uncovering volumes upon volumes of a huge amount of information that is has been out there for centuries that have been written about our ancestors. And I'm like, they've got all of this information. And so I got to the point where I'm like, no, surely I'm not the only one. Uh, that wasn't taught any of this history. Let me do a survey and find out, you know, whether or not there are others out there 
who maybe went through school, college and university in the UK. And maybe, you know, I've learned a lot about all of this history or didn't learn anything at all. I want to be able to gauge the extent to which this information about our ancient um, history is being taught in the schools, colleges. So thank you, Dr. Winters. I'll put my email address in the, in the chat. And uh, family, family, if you send me your email address or just message me, I'll send you a link to the survey. It'll only take you about three min minutes to fill it in. And the good news is, the good thing is, is that everyone who responds, their, their detail is going to go into a hat and you will be getting a priority copy of my book, which is almost completed. It's coming very, very soon. And this book is talking about a black Anglo-Saxon king that I also found out about on my studies. And I want to thank and big up uh, Dr. Marie Charles, who mentioned the name of um, King Offa in her research work. She said he was a black Anglo-Saxon king. I'm going to say, well, I'm there. Oh, we know you about this man. And so I'm like, I was so blown away from it. I did a bit of research and I brought the research information to the class. And Dr. Winter says, you've got to do a book on this. <laughs> you've got to do a book on this. So that book is coming. And if you fill out my research, you will get a priority uh, <laughs> copy of that book. And so, see, the, uh, the, the good thing about this book is, is that we need something for the children. We need, we need the children. And see a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the foundational Black British children, they're growing up with no heroes that they can identify with. And so, the beautiful thing about the book that uh, that uh, Sister Janice is writing is there's a book about one of the one of their ancestors, one of their heroes, and they can see too that they can accumulate and they can show their genius because he's so much, so much time is spent by the Anglo-Saxons, the white Anglo-Saxons, that is. So much time is spent by the white Anglo-Saxons, Britain and the United States, to keep us ignorant of our history. They don't want our children to grow up with heroes. You know, wow. we need British, Black children, the Baradanak children, to know that this is your home. Not yes. only is this your home, but you have heroes who've done greatness, and you can do great things too. Yeah, but see, yeah. as long as, until we can do something like that, our children are going to think that they have to do something criminal to be mm -hmm. successful, especially mm -hmm. our black boys. Because mm -hmm. our black boys, a lot of times they don't have, I'm talking about America, Britain, a lot of times our boys, they grow up, they want everything to come easy. And they yeah. want things to come right away. So often they won't go into that trade program or they won't go into that university because they feel that it, that it'll take too much time, but mm -hmm. they may turn to maybe, you know, selling drugs, crime or whatever. We mm -hmm. don't want that. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. want that. We want our children to know that you can be successful and you will be successful. But until we get these books out, like the one that Sister Janice is writing, so our children will know that there are heroes. Yes. Everybody is not a thug. Mm -hmm. Everybody, does not have to, well, they carry swords, but everybody doesn't have to always carry a knife. But I'll be honest, when I grew up, I carried a knife too, because <laughs> that's just one of those things. I don't carry one now, but I don't carry one now because at 71 years old. Wow, 71. Woo! At 71 years old, just go ahead and shoot me, cut me up. I, I can only go, I can only go 21 seconds. So. <laughs> But again, oh, we don't want to you do look that. so good for your age. Oh my gosh, I wouldn't have put those years on you, Dr. Winters. My, 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 did you hear that family? Wow, but, you are doing so well, so well for your beautiful but, age. But, but, but the beauty of it is this is that we're going to have more of our children after because I hope this I hope this is just one book, Sister Shanice. I hope Shanice that you that this is just one book among many you're going to write. Oh, because thank you. Are. With your encouragement, with your encouragement, definitely. And the that's the other beautiful thing about this course. You are just so inspirational. You really are. You just inspire us to do that much more. Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, so because of you, this book is coming. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. But the thing is, this is that I, I'd rather I'd rather think that it's not me. It's the need of the children. 
Mm -hmm. Because other children, the children need this book and the other books I hope you may write. You know, yeah. because they need books, you know, and uh maybe uh maybe one day you may even do a, a, a book in real real, you know, fifth grade, or what we call fifth grade English, so that the kids can read about their history and see their place in history. You yeah. see, because I've heard a lot of people say that grew up in Britain, that they would always tell people, go home. Uh, you said, damn, I was born here. This is my home. <laughs> but they would tell you to go home. You're not welcome here. And, right. and even today, and you know, even today they do those things, but, but Britain is your home. That's you right. Back. And that's we were that's the original the, people. We were the right. first people in this part of the world. This is the sort of thing you discover. When you do the research into our history, we are the Baratanaks, the first, the original people right. in Britain, the British Isles, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and the whole of Europe. We are home. They need to go home. Go home. Go home. They need to go home. We've come back home. Get out of here. <laughs> they can't tell us that anymore, for those of us who know. The family's in the house. Oh, we want to rise up, go travel. Our sister Baguette, another author in the house. Rise up, rise up, sis. Uh, watching us all the way from Nicaragua. It is. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Osara, rise up, rise up. Good to have you in the house. Go travel is saying 71 years young. Oh, yes, indeed. Beautiful. Rise up, Lily. Good to have you in the house. Uh, KZ says, Sister Shanice, when is your book coming out? I'm trying to get it out before the end of this month. It was, you know, my desire to have it ready for uh, African History Month. Uh, I've got some wonderful, wonderful supporters, Sister Baguette uh, who, and Brother Simon, who've looked through it for me. They've made some suggestions for its improvement. So I'm just making taking those suggestions on board, polishing it up and then it will be ready to go live. So the first uh, one will be an electronic copy. So yeah, fill in a questionnaire. I've dropped my email in the chat and uh, you could be in for getting a, a prize copy of that book. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our very own Dr. Clyde Winters. He's an anthropologist, uh, uh, he's a historian, a, a linguist, researches uh, from a genetical perspective. He's author of countless books and papers. Wow, 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 he is absolutely awesome. And we are honored to have him black with us family. So I'm gonna move out the way so that you can take the stage uh, Dr. Winters, we are privileged to have you here uh, with us today. Tell us what is the topic going to be about? And over uh, to you. The topic is going to be. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can uh, go to where uh, I can't. I can't get the. Uh, I'm trying to go to where the sharing is. I don't see it yet. Oh, share screen. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we're we're not using Zoom, so it might be a little bit different. Um, uh, what, let's see what I can see down here. So in the settings, da, 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 uh, mute, stop cam settings, present. Oh, what does it say? Present. Oh yeah, present. There it is. Yeah, try that one. Yeah. Okay. Be good if they were consistent across the board, isn't it? <laughs> Coming different. Let me see, I don't. What happens when you say present, when you click present? We'll see. <laughs> okay. So family, you're in for a great treat again today. And uh, they've tried to airbrush us out of history, but with greats like Dr. Winters, let me tell you a little bit about him because I've got his bio here now. Dr. Clive Winters is an educator, educational psychologist, anthropologist, and linguist. And he has taught all grades from elementary school right up to uh, college. And also he's taught uh, education and linguistics at a university level in Chicago as well. Uh, he's been interested in learning theory, um, brain-based learning, ancient history, and uh, population genetics. And he's been instrumental 
in using population genetic linguistics and anthropology to prove uh, the indigenous origins of Afro-Americans and African origin of the Paleo-Americans in North and South America. And uh, Dr. Winster has illustrated that Africans have been settled in, new, in the new world and building new civilizations and cultures in the America for at least the past 100,000 years. Uh, Dr. Winters has published and written numerous anthropological, linguistic education and population genetics articles. Many of these articles have appeared in peer reviewed journals and online. He's published 34 books, including Atlantis in Mexico. So we are in for a treat today, today. Let's hope that, uh, ah, yes, here's the presentation, Dr. Winters. I'm gonna add it to the stream. Uh, right now. So okay. just clicking on it <clears throat> and hopefully that's all I need to do. And uh, it should come up. Can everybody, uh, Can is it on the screen? I can't see it yet. Uh, oh, okay. It's thinking about it. Something's happening. Um, it's not there yet. Let me try again. Add to stream. Oh, yes, it's coming. There it is. Oop, there it is. Over to you, Dr. Winters. Thank you. Okay. Hidden history of the uh, Africans wiped out of England. The mass FBB clearance from England and the British Isles. Okay. Uh, these are the slides from this presentation. They're going to be in my Patreon. So if you want to see the slides, you can get a copy of the slides and they'll be in my Patreon. All you have to do is go to Patreon and put in Clyde Winters. But also, while you're at Patreon, you can maybe join Sister Shanice. But uh, she has her Patreon page, too. But uh, mine is there, Clyde Winters. Uh, Twitter, at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. Sometimes I get on Twitter, off and on. Okay, at, uh, on, at YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, and I have over 200 videos. And these videos are all about ancient history, Black people in history. If you want to find out more about Black people in history, go to my U my YouTube uh, site, uh, subscribe, and when I come out with a new video, you'll find out about it. You can order my books at Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Yes. Yes. We're going to talk today about Escalabitu, you know, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, because, see, many people, they think they know about slavery. But we're not going to talk so much about slavery in terms of its, in terms of, of what it was like or how people were affected. We're basically going to look at how the Baradin Acts, the foundation of Black Britons, were forced out of Britain and sent to many places around the, the uh, world. Slavery, yes, slavery. Slavery was a terrible thing. Slavery was something that nobody should ever want to experience. Many people try to run away from the whole idea of slavery because they don't want to feel that pain. They don't want to feel that hurt. And yet we have to face slavery. We have to face slavery. We have to face that it was some demons who took us away from our homeland in Britain, who took us away from our homeland in Africa, and they forced us to be slaves. Often many of the slaves that first came to Jamaica, that first came to Barbados, you know, those slaves, many of them were worked to death. Yes, they were worked from sun up to sundown, given no rest, you see, given no rest. But this is a part of our history that we have to accept. It's not so much in the sense that we should see this as a negative. Negative. Look at how many people have went to Britain from the Caribbean, went to Britain from Africa. They said you were primitive, but look how they finished university. They're in trade. They're making money. Some of them are even millionaires. So don't ever doubt what you can do. Just because we have a slave heritage, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, you should be proud. You have been taught a fake history of Europe. They have taught you that you don't belong in the UK. They have told you that the UK has always been a land inhabited by whites. Yes, this is what they teach you. They have told you that you were inferior to whites until they kidnapped your ancestors from Mama Africa. This is a lie. You are the Aboriginal people of the UK. 
Whites came into Europe after 1500 BC. Yes, yes. They mainly lived in Central Asia. They didn't live in Europe. Europe was a black, well, well, they call it a continent. Europe, Western Eurasia, all the way to the British Isles was dominated by black people like you, like me, like us. Your ancestors gave the UK its long history. Yes, yes. The Anglo-Saxons, they're very recent to the UK. It was you. It was you, Baradanax. It was you, Foundational Black Britons, that really gives history to, to, to the UK, gives that rich history. You see, it was your ancestors that developed the architecture. It was your ancestors that developed the shipbuilding. It was your ancestors that created the literature. I've read somewhere that even Shakespeare was a brother. Man. Yes. Yes. You've been lied to. We've all been lied to. We have a history. We have a history. And the foundational Black Britons have a great history. The Baradanax. You know, you can read about uh, some of the uh, history of the Aboriginal uh, Black people in my book, Blacks in Europe, from prehistory to contemporary times. Also, uh, you can read about, in a sense, uh, how Europe was a Black continent in my book, The World History of the Black Race. Also, I explain to you how white people only recently got into Europe. In my book, Manufactured Genetic Origins, The Fake Eurasian, back migration. In this book, I tell you how white people are teaching you a lie about even their history. Sadly, sadly, the Caucasian has a very little history. He has Rome. He has Greece. But outside of Rome and Greece, the history of Europe is your history. You built the cities. You constructed the bridges, the roads. They were done by you. You. You built it. The first blacks in the British Isles were small size. Yes. Yes. They represented the pygmies called Twa and Anu. Davis and Thermia and Crania Britannica said the Celtic people were short and dark. They noted that Scotland was full of these little dark and curly haired people. Curly hair. Like you. Like me. You see. They reconstructed, this is one of their reconstructions. What they do is that they use a skull. You know, in forensic science, what happened is this. This really came, this really came from uh, the yeah, criminal, the criminal justice uh, community. What happened is, is that they would find a lot of they would find a lot of dead people. They would only, in a sense, maybe find a skull of that dead person. And so these forensic scientists, what they did is that. They would try to look at those skulls and they would try to figure out how that person really lived based upon their skull. And this is how they say this picture. This is a picture of your ancestor. This is a picture of some of the first little dark, curly haired black people that lived in Britain. There were several migrations of blacks to the British Isles. These Blacks would include the Khoisan, who were represented as the people associated with Chatterman. I know everybody's heard of Chatterman. The next group to enter the United Kingdom were the Anu. The Anu were represented by the small Blacks associated with Ireland and the Highlanders of Scotland. Many of these Blacks lived in Burren as, as many thousands of years ago. It is very complicated. This whole history may have to be revisited. Revisited. Mm -hmm. Sister mm -hmm. Janice told me about a great book today that says that the pygmies were here 250,000 years ago. I'm gonna get that book, I'm gonna read it, we're gonna interpret it, and we're gonna see if we can really get even firmer knowledge. Because see, some people have said over the years that it's been black people for a million years, a million That's right. years. That's right. I can't yeah. prove it, but we know that the skeletons, the skeletal remains of these little small people Go back 500,000 years in Southern Africa. So we know that our people have been around a long time. And you, 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 
you foundational black Britons. Don't shortchange yourself. Your memories, your memories, my memories, our memories go back 500,000 years to those first black people who spread civilization, those first black people who built the calendar. Oh, Mama Africa. Yes, yes. I'm a man. I'll admit, but it was you sisters. It was you who were the mother goddesses. It was you who looked upon the stars. You looked at the moon. You found that the moon went a regular cycle. Mm -hmm. Eventually you said, hey, that moon is almost like my menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. Every 27 to 30 years, I have a period. I'm a man. I went hunting. Damn. I went hunting. I took my bow and my arrow. When I shot a deer, I shot a wildebeest. That wildebeest bled and it died. Died. Mm -hmm. And yet, here was my woman, my lady, my love. She bled every month. I was scared of her. I was scared of her because I knew God had made her special. Mm -hmm. made her special because she bled, but she didn't die. She didn't die. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't touch her. No, I'm not going to touch her. Not with that blood. And what did mama say? Mama said, I'm going to study the moon. I'm going to start marking the, putting marks on the bone, putting marks on the on the uh, stone. So I know when my mind, my mind, my mind can touch me. And you know what came from her putting those notches on the bone, notches on the stone. It was you, black woman, yo, 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 who invented the calendar. You invented the calendar. So your mind could be with you. And we'll touch you. But just think of the uniqueness the uniqueness of you, black woman. Mm -hmm. We need you. Without you, we're nothing. 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 The next major group in the UK were the Danines of Egypt and the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were Kushites who settled various locations in the British Isles. The British Isles experienced multiple invasions of blacks from Iberia, the Middle East, and Africa. The Celts came to Ireland in 500 BC. Yes, yes, you were the Celts. You didn't know that, did you? They make all these movies. I know you've seen so many documentaries and TV shows about the Celts, and you believed they taught you that the Celts were why? No, the Celts were you. That's right. Mm -hmm. the Celts were you, sister. They know it. They know it. It's in their books. And they've got those books all over the place in their archives. They're not even in the archives. You can go into the regular libraries and find them. But they tell you, they make you feel that when you look, when you look in the mirror, when you look in the mirror, they make you believe in a sense that you're seeing somebody that came from a primitive village, a hut. That's why they tell you the Celts, the Danes, the Venetians, the Egyptians. They tell you all these people were why. <laughs> but they tell you that so that you will not know your greatness. When you look in the mirror, brother, when you look in the mirror, sister, you should see the people who built the world, built mm -hmm. the When you yeah. look in the mirror, stop seeing that Negro. When you look in the mirror, you should see the Baradanaks, mm -hmm. your ancestors, mm -hmm. the ones who made Britain what it is. You built the roads. You built the mines. You did the architecture. And then after the Celts, finally we see the migration of Moors. Yes, Moors and Black Vikings. Anybody that saw my last show, you know, I talked about the Moors and Vikings. Yes, they were Black too. Mm -hmm. They were called mm -hmm. Moors. You see? These black Vikings, they settled Ireland in 79, 795 AD. And the Black Norse Kingdom of Dublin, you know, was founded in 839 AD. What? 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 
what? Your foundational black Britons, they knew this. They hid this from you because they didn't want to know that you made civilization in Britain. Dr. Marie Charles, Dr. Marie Charles, whoa. Dr. Marie Charles, this lady, she changed my whole world, my whole understanding. Listen, I taught, I taught Afro-American and African history for 46 years in the Chicago public schools at universities. But I didn't even know my real history until I found out from Dr. Marie Charles wow. about the history of the Baradanaks, mm -hmm. about the history of the Black Scotsmen, the Black Irish. Mm -hmm. You have to try to get this woman's work, her books, her books. They're kind of expensive, but I'm going to tell you why they're expensive. They're expensive because she published them on white paper. And she puts plenty of pictures. She puts, puts plenty of pictures in her books. So you know who you are. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the pictures. You know, a picture says more than words. And that's what Dr. Marie Charles is doing. She shows the connections between ancient Britannica and Africa. Dr. Marie Charles initially taught as a primary classroom teacher before moving into pedagog pedagogical research and teacher education. With a career spanning over 30 years, she has taught across the range from young children to adults. The history of the foundational Black Britons. <clears throat> I know there's some people jumping in the chat saying, how can you call yourself a foundational Black Briton? Uh, read our work. Look at my video. I did earlier about the Black Vikings. And you'll know why you can be called a foundational Black Britain. Marie Charles has a doctorate in cultural studies and humanities with a special focus on curriculum writing and reconceptualization of the curriculum. Dr. Charles has published extensively in international peer-reviewed journals. Yes, this is a peer-reviewed author and is the co-author of a trilogy of research-based books on formative teaching based on multimodalities and multiliteracies. Dr. Charles is also the director of the Many Faces in Teaching, MFID, my fit, organization, which gathers and publishes research-based programs to empower the learner and facilitator or teacher. Yes, 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 Dr. Marie Charles. This foundational Black Britain, she's setting the world on fire. She's letting us know the history of the Baradonaks. You, you, you. She's teaching us your history. Dr. Child's goal is to reframing and decolonizing the Eurocentric curriculum taught in UK schools. Dr. Child has developed a teaching program around the genesis of geometry, which is linked to our Afro African Af flesh, Ra, hidden, sun, kaso, flesh and soul of the hidden sun. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why you love the sun. That's why when it get warm, you want to put on your shorts. Or if you're a brother, you want to put on something that's, that, that's a little bit more comfortable so that you can feel the heat of the sun, that you can feel in the sense the wind. I didn't say now you want to be 100 degrees or, or you want to be 95 degrees because in Africa, Africa don't get that hot, except in the desert. The average temperature in Africa is 85 degrees. And that's how we like it, cool and comfortable. She focuses on the material culture that our ancestors conceived, developed and sustained over millennia in the British Isles, the UK, the UK. Dr. Charles has developed a teaching method around our African origins and the subsequent migrations out of Africa of the first people, black people, with a focus on the material culture that our ancestors conceived, developed and sustained over many millennia. Infant exists to hear the agency of those who are reacting and responding in such a way that we want them to know that these structures are always contingent, tentative, provincial, and therefore subject to transformation.
know who you are so you won't catch caves. Caves is culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome. What that means is that if you don't know your history, if you don't know who you are, you will seek into a molasses. You begin to, to, to feel that you have no culture. And you feel like an outcast because you feel, you feel, you feel that white folks won't let you belong to their culture. So you feel, you feel, you feel abandoned. You feel, you feel, you feel a deep illness, a sickness because of caves. But to fight caves, you have to learn your history. And this is what Dr. Marie Charles is doing. She's teaching you your history. She taught me some of my history. Because some of the Baradonaks, some of the Black Irish, some of the Black Scotsmen, they were sold over here in the Americas. Some of them was on the same plantations I was on. My great, 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 great granny. <laughs> and my great, great, great grandfather, they was on the plantation with Black Irish. The Black Scotchman. Oh, we suffered together, baby. But, but we're going to move together and be great. The names of the foundation of Black Britons were called Scythians, that equal Cushites, Celts, Picts. They were called Nigra, Nigra, Dupa, Scotland, Moors, nigga. Yes, nigga. They called themselves some nigga. There's a great book written by a brother on the, uh, on the uh, leaders of Scotland. And he talks about the fact that that was a name, in a sense, that wasn't so corruptible. It wasn't held in contempt like we use it today. It was one of the names that made us great, the names that identified us as a great people. The descendants of the Black Prince usually have the surnames Duke, Douglas. Douglas, that means Black or Swarthy. Macduff, Dodge, Brown, Black, Morgan, Roar, Niger, Rory, or Roderick. My preference of the Negro origin of the Black Britons was thick of many Britons, according to Mac Ritchie. The Negro Morris coat of arms for many of these British families. Yes, yes, yes. One day, look up the Morris, the coat of arms of many British families. You're going to find that many of their ancestors were Black, just mm -hmm. like you. Even though they tell you that you don't belong in Britain. Even though they tell you that there's nothing in Britain for you, they know their ancestors were black. But they tried to marry a lot of the Anglo-Saxons. They brought in they brought in slaves. Yes, they brought slaves from the Turks, you know, so they could get white women over here in the Britain and the, so they could turn around the race, get rid of the black folks. But they can't hide our history. They can't hide your history. Barry's Encyclopedia Heraldica noted that, and I quote, Moore's head is the heraldic term for the head of a black or Negro man. Due to mixing with the invading white Europeans, the black Europeans like the gypsies, Scots, and Irish lost their dark complexions. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they found, I think they found a few years ago that, that the oldest, that the oldest, genetic genetic profile of a person in Britain was the profile that you find in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then some people say, Dr. Winters, how can you say that? They're not black now. Yes. Yes. That's because they kept marrying light to change the race, the racial look. You see, but they can't move away from their ancestry. That's why when you see these rich families, when you look at their coat of arms, you see black people, you see Moors as their ancestors. They just try to tell you that you don't belong, but that's because they're living in a fantasy, a facade, a world of whiteness that really came from the blackness. This is what they used to call it. Irish, the Iberian, the Anglo Teutonic. That's who they said. That's who they said. They want to make everybody think that it's the Anglo Teutonic. But look at that Irish or that Iberian and the Negro. That's about the same because, see, even back then, 
Even back then, they knew the Irish and the Iberians were had an African ancestry, a Negro ancestry. That's why they wrote, that's why they drew this Irish or this Iberian looking like this. But they lie to you and tell you that the Irish and the Scots have always been white. Look, look, look at what the Scot, look at what the people in Scotland wear. They always wear a coat, a kilt, a kilt. But that kilt is based upon the Egyptian heritage of the black Scotsmen. Isn't that what it is? Isn't that what it is? It's nothing more than identification with your heritage, but they've stolen your heritage. They stole it in the sense of your heritage. Mm -hmm. They made you believe that you're a slave. Mm -hmm. You're a descendant of slaves. That all you can do is work for them. You out the stone, but you weren't. You were Britain. You were the UK. BPP, BPP, FDB, foundational black Britons. That's who you are. Be one, be one. Mm -hmm. Large number of black Irish slaves were sold in the Caribbean slavery. For example, 50,000 black Irish slaves a year were sold into slavery in the New World between 1652 to 1656. Cromwell and the Bristol merchants, they even sold 100,000 Irish children. And these 100,000 black Irish children, they were made slaves in Virginia, New England. You know, I was reading this book the other day. And this guy was trying to say that that the Irish slaves, that I mean, that the Irish, when they came to the Americas, they were indentured service. That's a damn lie. The only Irish that were indentured servants were people who were white or they were black Protestants. If you came over here as a Catholic black, you were made of chattel slaves. Those are some evil people. Mm -hmm. But they were made chattel slaves by black people too. What? What? All skin folk ain't kin folk. Mm -hmm. In the proclamation of 1625, it tells us about the black Irish who were sold as slaves. We understand how the Irish were classified as colored, just like African freemen. Yes. 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 When you read these books and they tell you how the Irish turned white. That wasn't just a metaphor. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Most of the Irish that was over here were black. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Later, when the, during the potato famine, after the Irish got whitened up, those were the white ones. The black Irish, the black Irish were either exterminated by the English or sold into slavery. In the Proclamation of 1625 by Herbert L. Byrd. He reported that King Charles sent 30,000 black Irish prisoners to chattel slavery in Barbados, Montserrat, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, and the 13 colonies of North America. King Charles. He didn't give them, he didn't give them no indenture. He sent them into chattel slavery. What is chattel slavery? He sent them into those areas as property. They were the personal property of their slave masters. Many of these slave masters are sad too. Uh, 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 uh. Many of these slave masters was black, but they were Protestants. You see, that's one of our biggest problems today. We had this competition. I'm a black Hebrew. I'm a I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic. If I'm a I'm I'm a Protestant. Those identifications, those heritages is what put us into this bad situation. Because mm -hmm. many of our black Protestants who lived in England, they hated black Catholics. They didn't hate them because they were black. They hated them because they were Catholic. Other Irish slaves were sent to Guyana in 1629 and Tingua and Montesquieu in 1652. By 1637, now listen to this. 
by 1637, 69% of the inhabitants of Montserrat were Black Irish. Yes. Yes. They sent you there. They sent the Baradanax, the foundation of Black Britons. They sent you there if you were a Catholic. And they sent you there, not in an indentured. They sent you there as a chattel slave. Just like they made you like a cow. They made you like a dog. Just like they could treat a dog bad. Just like they could treat a cow bad. They were treating the black Irish and the black Scotsmen like a piece of dookie. Whipping them, beating them. Oh, 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 my ancestors went through. Oliver Cromwell, oh, that dirty, dirty, dirty man. Oliver Cromwell was an English general statesman. He was born in 1599. Crom Cromwell hated Catholics. You see, he hated Catholics. They got this painting of him, but I'm sorry to say he was black. All kid folk, all kid folk, hey kid folk. In this day, he hated the majority of of black of the uh, black Catholics because it was the cat black Catholics who were the kings the Queens. It was the black Catholics who ran most of the estates. And so Oliver Cromwell, he was a Protestant. He wanted to take over that power. He wanted to be the boss man. And he felt he could be the boss man by torturing the black Irish and Scotsmen. African slaves were not the first slaves in the British Caribbean and North. The first slaves were Aboriginal Black Native Americans and Black Irish. The Black Irish slaves usually had to sail, sail to America for nine to 12 weeks to reach the Caribbean. The trip across the Atlantic was, was harsh, and many Blacks died of scurvy, dysentery, and dehydration. The money the Black Irish just tossed into the sea. As a member of Parliament, Cromwell became Commander in Chief and led armies of the Parliament of England against King Charles I during the English Civil War. He also reconquered Scotland and Ireland and subsequently ruled the British Isles as Lord Protector from 1653 until his death in 1658. Yes, he reconquered Scotland. He reconquered Ireland. He wanted to get rid of those black Catholics. He reconquered Scotland. He reconquered Ireland to get rid of any black Catholic he could find. Just like today, just like the set today, you can find some of those, those, those evil black people, kids that grow up and they want to become robbers. They want to become criminals. They want to shoot each other. They want to stab each other. It just didn't happen today. It happened back then, but they pretended, they believed that because I'm a Protestant, I have a right to kill any, any black Catholic. Oliver, Oliver Cromwell began to reconquer Ireland in 1649. He hated Catholics. He hated Catholics. He massacred 3,500 in the first battle, yes. The rest were sold as slaves in the 13 colonies. Between 1649 and 1653, he sent those black Irish and Scotsmen into slavery with his dirty, dirty man. African slaves were not the first slaves in the British Isles. You see, this is what they did. I know you heard about the Middle Passage, but that Middle Passage, it was the same thing when you crossed from Ireland to the Caribbean. If you were sick, they would just throw you in the ocean. Throw you in the ocean in slaves. You couldn't even swim. How are you going to swim with a chain on you? That's what they did to the Black Irish. That's what they did to the Black Scotsmen. Terrible. 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 When you think about the viciousness of those Protestants, the black Protestants, the white Protestants, 
They just didn't care what happened to our black people. They didn't care what happened to your ancestors. If you live in the Caribbean, if you came from the Caribbean, your ancestors was done like this, like this, like this. Oliver Cromwell reconquered Ireland in 1649. He hated Catholics. He massacred 3,500. He sent 100,000 Irish children to Virginia and New England. Look, look at this a picture from the time. The picture from the time. The picture from the time. Look at that picture. Oh, oh, oh. Look at it. it was, look at how they made the faces of those women black. They called them rebels. Look at the rest of them, they was kind of white. Look at they got babies on the pole. They killed our children. They killed our children. They killed our children. They killed our children. That's what they're doing today. Every day, every day in the UK, when you send your child to school, they're killing him mentally. <laughs> they may not have your child up on a damn spear, but they're still killing them mentally. They're killing them in this mental illness. This whole pressure leads to depression. Look at your kids. They need the book that Sister Janice is writing. They need to know that they have black heroes, that they're foundational <laughs> black friends, the Baradonax. This is how the slave trade went. This is how the slave trade went. They sent you a black Irish man. They sent the black Scotch man. They sent them to America. And they brought back wheat, fur, timber, and fish, and tobacco. And they sold our black blood. They sold us. And they didn't give a damn what they did to us. They didn't give a damn how they treated us. Those were black people like you, but they didn't all come from Africa. They came from the UK, thousands of them. Hundreds of thousands of these black Irish men and Catholics. That's because they believed in Catholicism. They sent them away. Many sick Irish slaves were thrown into the ocean to save money. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. They also allow slave traders to kidnap Irish people. During the 12 year suppression of the Irish, Cromwell sold around 300,000 as slaves to the 13 colonies and the Caribbean between 1651 and 1660. An estimated 130,000 was sold into the Caribbean. Yes, 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 yes. Just because you came from Jamaica, St. Kitts, Guyana, Trinidad, Tobago, you're home, you're home, you're home. Oh, oh, you're home. Oh, the UK is your land. The UK is your land. Look, here's some of the ads. A runaway from the subscriber living in Canlasta. This is over in America. A native Irish serving woman named Katie Norton, who came from the county of Wicklow in Ireland last fall. She's about 25 or 26 years of age, of a dark complexion. I don't have to lie. I know it's people in the chat, those trolls, trying to tell you that I'm lying. I'm not lying. The Irish, the all true. Irish it's the all true. Irishmen, that came to the Americas, they were black like you, mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. She is about 25 to 26 years of age of a dark complexion, has black hair, talks in the Irish dialect, rocks in her walk, Rocks in the walk. She was cool, baby, baby. And it's pretty sharp and talking. Yes, sirs. Yes, sirs. Yes, sirs. But what did he say? She is a cunning hussy. And no doubt will pass a while. 
for an honest woman as she has good clothes with her and can behave herself. Whoever takes up said woman and brings her to the subscriber in Lancaster shall have three pounds reward and reasonable charges paid by me, Robert Fulton. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't that what they say about us today? Isn't that what they say about black women today in Britain and the United States? Oh, you're a hussy. Oh, you're a low down. No, no, you're beautiful. Black women are the most beautiful women on the planet Earth. Everybody is jealous of you. They, are, they hate you because of your elegance. They hate you because of your grace. They talk about you. They put you down. But that's only because they wish they were you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, daddy, 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 mother. Virginia Gazette. Williamsburg from August 10 to August 2, 1739. Ran away the 8th of July last from the subscribers living in Westmoreland County. Four serving men, viz. John, John McHugh, Francis Mann, Daniel Fritz Patrick, and John Free Love. John McHugh is an Irishman of a middle stature. Swarthy, swarthy complexion. I mean, he was black. His hair is just cut off and is a blacksmith by trade. He has one of the arms of bleeding heart, pricked with gunpowder, and a name of length with several other letters. He had on when he went away, a bluish gray coat and breeches, a Douglas shirt and an old hat. He also took with him a pair of long trousers and as Ozanim shirt. Francis Mann is an Englishman of middle stature, swarthy complexion. Oh, we got it. We got an Irishman and we got Englishman. Go look at an old dictionary. Don't look at the dictionary today. Look at the old dictionary from back then. It will tell you that Swarthy meant they were black. Black, black, like you. Swarthy complexion, short brown hair, and yellowish rotten. Yellowish rotten teeth, speaks quick and full mouth. He goes a little lame and says one of his legs have been broke. He is a blacksmith by trade. Listen, listen. You look at this. They didn't, they didn't bring over, they didn't get from Ireland no dummies. They got tradesmen from Ireland, black tradesmen, so they could put them on a plantation, so they could work for them for free because those English were so lazy. Those Protestants were so lazy. Lazy. They wanted to get a black Irishman, a black Englishman, a black mm -hmm. Protestant to do their work for them. Daddy, daddy, daddy. <laughs> Bristol merchants sold many Irish into slavery. Between 1651 to 1654, 34,000 to 40,000 Irish Roman Catholics were sold as slaves. These were black. Irish men served as mercenaries. They were sold to be placed in arms across Europe, especially France and Spain. Women were sold elsewhere. Just, you know, they were so dirty. Cromwell was so dirty. Cromwell, Cromwell would tell the black Irish men, if you fight, if you fight for me, your, your wife and your children will be safe. Your mothers will be safe. He was a damn lie. That Cromwell was a dirty daddy. Daddy, brother. And they would send these black Irishmen and they would sell them around, the, around Europe so they could fight in the wars, the European wars. These black Irishmen, these black Scotchmen, these black Englishmen, they thought about fighting, fighting in these wars that their, their wives and their children were saved, but they weren't saved. They weren't saved. Cromwell took their wives and their children and sent them over to America, sent them to the Caribbean to be his slaves. Many of these slaves were women and children sent to Barbados and the 13 colonies. 50,000 a year Irish slaves were sold to the New World between 1652 and 1656. That's an estimate. They don't even know how many were sold. To hell of Barbados. To hell of Barbados. Those are black people that they were selling as slaves. Those Irish, those Scotsmen, they weren't white. They weren't Protestant. They were black Catholics. You know, it's a, it's a guy over here in America called Karimio Ahu. 
He's a story in a bibliophile. He, uh, he's got some uh, tapes on the internet where he goes into some of these books, yes. He goes into many of the books, and in many of these books, he shows how these British authors were, were writing about the Irish being black. Oh, today, oh, today, give me some of them, give me something to drink. That's what we always think about Irish in America. We always think that Irish are drunk. But after the Irish, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> He explains how Irish were in Scotland and Ireland. He illustrates how many Irish were sent to Caribbean by Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell sent 300,000 black Irish to the 13 colonies and Caribbean as chattel slaves. Oliver Cromwell can be credited with the exile, yes, exile, and extermination of many blacks in Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. Cromwell in his war to reconquer the Irish sent black Irish to the Caribbean and 13 colonies. And this is what he said, listen, 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 listen. He went before parliament and he made it clear that those, those black Irish and those black Scotsmen who were sent to the new world, they were to be perpetually slaves. They're supposed to be slaves the rest of their life. He sent them to the sugar plantation. For example, in 1650, 20,000 black Irish were sent as slaves to Barbados. The only black Irish that were indentured servants, these were black people who were Protestants. After the Battle of Worcester, Cromwell sent 10,000 Welsh, 10,000 black Welshmen. Yeah, you live there too. They were sent into slavery. All oh, skin folk ain't kin folk. Those were black Protestants sending black Kyrat, black Catholics. But they didn't care. All they thought about was the greed and the money. They just wanted some people to go. And they especially after Jamaica, after they took Jamaica from the Spanish, they want to get as many people to work there. They didn't want to work with their lazy asses. Excuse me. So they went and got the black Welch, the black Scotsman, the black Irish to do their dirty work. Cromwell saw slavery as a perfect way to remove the Catholic blacks from Ireland and Scotland. Cromwell usually worked with Bristol merchants to sell many Irish into slavery. Between 1651, 1634, 34,000, 40,000 black Irish Roman Catholics were sold as slaves. Cromwell forced many black Irish to serve in his army. Instead of freeing these blacks, black Irishmen were forced to serve as mercenaries. They were sold by Cromwell to be placed in armies across Europe. These black Irish especially fought in France and Spain. Daddy, daddy, daddy! Daddy, daddy, daddy! Cromwell was especially interested in populating Jamaica. As a result, many of these slaves were women and children into Jamaica, Barbados, and the 13 colonies. Yes, 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 yes! Look how they beat the sister. Look how they beat the sister. And they holding a the black man. Man, you bet not go try to help your woman. We'll beat you even worse. They was raping black men. They was raping black women. Yes. Evil, 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 evil. Look at what they did. You see these two white gentlemen. They had a they had a half black person of mulatto beating the rest of the black folk. They want to instill in you, instill in you a hate for the brother man. A hate. They instilled in us a hate, and we carry this hate around the world. When you go to Chicago, you see black men killing black men. You go to Britain, you see black men killing black men. Why? Because this European, this evil, 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 evil man, he inculcated us. A hate for each other. Instead of a love, instead of a love. Many other Jacobites. I know you've heard about the Jacobites. You hear a lot about these Jacobites 
But you don't know, you didn't know this, I bet, that many other Jacobites that came to the United States were brought in acts or plaques. King William III came to power through support of parliamentary opposition to King James II. William was a prominent soldier that was married to King Gil, the daughter of Mary, uh, King, uh, the king's daughter, Mary. In 1688, the parliament, parliamentary opposition invited William to take over the British crown. William landed in England November 1688 with 463 ships and 14,000 troops. Now, you know, the British, had the, the British had the best Navy in the world, but they didn't stop William because they wanted William to come. William was white. They wanted to get that black man out of office. They wanted to get rid of John, King John. They wanted him out of office. So they bought a black man, a white man from Germany to take the crown. He came with 463 ships and nobody touched him. William marched on London and King James fled to France. In February 1689, William became King William III and Queen Mary II. This takeover of the crown by King William called the Glorious Revolution. They call it the Glorious Revolution because that was the beginning of white power, baby. White power. Put the brother down. They wanted to get rid of King John because he was black. Yes. The black people. There were many black Protestants who supported this, all because of religion. Religion. Don't we fight each other today? We fight each other today over religions. Look over in Nigeria. How those Muslims, they fighting each other because Boko Haram. Boko Haram been influenced by the white Arabs. They want to be what's called Wahhabi, Wahhabi Muslims. And they want to kill the other Muslims. They're all black. Stop, stop, stop. Be one. Be one. Black first. Jacob Ice, the problem passed the bill of rights around this time. This law made it against the law for any Catholic or descendant of King James to become King of England. King James VI of Scotland was King James III of England. His son was James Francis Edward. He was a Jacobite prince, King James III. Look, look at that picture. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's King James' son. Mm -hmm. You thought you were white man, didn't you? That's the lie. That's the lie they sell you. That's right. That's mm -hmm. Nice. John Mackey was a spy of King William III. His job was to spy on the Jacobites. John Mackey in a book called, you can have this book, you can buy it. This uh, book, John Mackey wrote this memoir, The Secret, Secret Services of John Mackey, 1733. He tells us about his monitoring of the Jacobites. John Mackey, he was a he was a spy. He went around and he observed all of these uh, people because he, uh, King William wanted to make sure that he could keep these uh, black people in line, you know. And so then he wanted, in a sense, he sent Mackey out to be around all these elites so he would be aware if they want to start a revolution. In the memoir, John Mackey describes the complexions, yes, yes, the complexions of the Jacobite leaders in his writings. Maggie makes it clear that Charles Seymour, Duke of Somerset, Sidney Godolphin, Lord Treasury of England, Daniel Finch, Secretary of State, and Earl of Nottingham, John Holes, Duke of Newcastle, Charles Lennis, Duke of Richmond, son of King Charles II, and his brother Charles, Charles Bo Bo Beauclerc, Duke of St. Albans, were all described as having very, get the book, get the book, I quote, very black complexion. Or Black Ruddy, to name a few of the Jacobites. Yes! They teach you in school. They taught you in high school, elementary school, and university that the Jacobites, you thought they were white, didn't you? <laughs> but you weren't dumb. That's what they told you. But the Jacobites, they were described as having brown complexion. Very dark complexion. They look like you. Oh, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> All skin folk ain't kin folk. 
you may ask the question. I know, I know we got the trolls. I know the trolls, the trolls. You may ask the question. If tens of thousands of Irish and Scotsmen were Negro or Black, especially the, the elites, why are they not depicted as Blacks in their paintings? The answer is simple. Yes, the answer is simple. Most of the original paintings of the Baradanax from Henry II, they were destroyed, yes. You're saying to yourself, here go Dr. Winters with some BS. Here go Dr. Winters wanting a lot. Why would they destroy all the pictures of the black elites in London and Britain and Scotland, Ireland? Yes, they were destroyed. They were painted later to make them appear as Caucasian. They wanted people to grow up in the UK to think that everybody was always white. They weren't white. They were black like you. The paintings of the Veronica are blacks of Britain. And I'm, I'm sending you the receipts, baby. I don't like to talk no BS. I bring my receipts with me. I bring my receipts. So you can get on the internet and you can find out if I'm telling the truth or not. <clears throat> Paintings of the Baradanax of Blacks of Britain were purposely destroyed by Thomas Cromwell. That's right. Thomas Cromwell, he, he may have been a descendant of, a, of a Oliver Cromwell, but he wasn't a direct descendant. Thomas Cromwell, he hated Catholics and Blacks generally. He wrote that, and I quote, this is what, uh, this, is what this guy named Stelwood wrote in 2015, and I quote, against a backdrop of Henry II's marital strife, the pathologically ambitious Cromwell single-handedly masterminded the break with Rome in order to hand Henry the church. Well, it's all important. Well, it's all important of divorce. Flush with the success of engineering Henry's first divorce, Cromwell moved on to confiscating the church's money. He was after that money, baby, baby, boy. He added that, and I quote, with lazy strokes of his pen, he condemned royalty, nobles, peasants, nuns and monks to a horrific summary execution. That's what he was doing. Thomas Cromwell, he was killing off the black people. He was killing your ancestors off. All he didn't send to Britain, all he didn't send to the Caribbean, all he didn't send to 13 colonies, they tried to kill all the black Catholics off, off, off. Thomas Cromwell had a direct impact on the disappearance of art. Depicting Baradanax. Selwood wrote in 2015, and I quote, and then there is the impact on this country's artistic and intellectual heritage. No one can be sure of the exact figure, but it is estimated that the destruction started by Cromwell amounted, and I quote, listen, listen, I'll repeat, but it is estimated that that the destruction started by Cromwell amounted to 97% of the English art then in existence. Statues were hacked down. Frescoes were smashed to bits. Mosaics were pulverized. Illuminated manuscripts were shredded. Wooden carvings were burnt. Precious metalwork was melted down. Shrines were reduced to rubble. This vandalism went way beyond a religious reform. It was a frenzy obliterating the artistic patrimony of centuries of indigenous craftsmanship with an intensity of hatred for imagery and depicting the divine that has strong and resonant parallels today. Yes. He couldn't stand seeing those black faces. He couldn't stand seeing those Negro faces. He had to burn them down. This man destroyed 97%. That's why you can it's hard to find black illustrations. If you go right now, if you go right now to the internet, I mentioned those uh, those various uh, people that McKay described as, as, as black. If you go to the internet today, you're going to see a, a picture of them that they're going to claim as a, as a picture, and that's going to be pictures of white people. And that's because Thomas Cromwell hated seeing those niggas, I mean, hated seeing those black people being the rulers. And they were Catholics. They hated them because they were Catholics, but he also hated them, I think, because they were black. Now you know why we have very few artifacts depicting the Baradanax. 
Many of the Irish slaves were women and children sent to Barbados in the 13 colonies. 50,000 a year. Scots were also made slaves. They tended the fields. They were the structures. Those mean da 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 Dirty men. There was an estimated 200,000 black Irish sold into slavery between 1651 and 1660. The black Irish were replaced by whites from England who were given land to settle in Ireland. You see that? You see that? They, they, they got rid of the black folk. They got rid of you. You. Um. white people. Many blacks who live in the United States today have direct European heritage. This class of foundational black America would mainly be descendants of Catholic black Irish and Scotsmen sent to the 13 colonies between 1659 and 1660. Some of the descendants of free European blacks probably went to Canada after the Revolutionary War. Those Europeans who remained in the United States, especially those who lived in New England, probably married whites, married whites. We will never be able to account for the ancestry of the Afro-Americans who came from Europe because over time, most of them became whites. For example, in 1850, while 83 out of every 1,000 slaves was mixed race, 500, 581 out of every 1,000 free AAs, or 58% were mulattoes. Given the, given the evident high rate of intermarriage between blacks and whites in the North, that's what happened to many of the uh, of the black Irish in here. But you know, these slides are from the British Black History Timeline. They have this online. The Slave Trade Act of 1807 was passed prohibiting the slave trade in the British Empire. The Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 abolished slavery throughout the British British Empire. Yes, it abolished slavery, but it was bullshit. They didn't really abolish slavery. This act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom expands the jurisdiction of the Slave Trade Act of 1807, which made the purchase or ownership of slaves illegal within the British Empire. Britain paid rep reparations. Yes! Britain paid reparations to slave owners amounting to 20 million pounds to compensate slave owners for the loss of their slaves in the Caribbean. You know, the, this one guy he did a study back in back in the day, and he said, "Damn, all these uh, all these a lot of these damn uh, people in Jamaica, they got Irish surnames. How the hell they get these Irish surnames?" So he said, "Oh, they must have these Irish surnames based upon the fact that they had Irish masters, because you know the white men always want to teach you that yo 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 surname came from uh, white people." Mm -hmm. You know what he found? He found out that many of these these black people in Jamaica who had Irish names, they had Irish names that are not documented as slaveholders. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even know he didn't even know why that happened. But now you know, you know, you know now. They had those Irish names because they were black Irishmen. Mm -hmm. They were black. That's good. Not a penny was those who were enslaved and brutalized. The British government brought 20 billion pounds, 20 million pounds to compensate slave holders, which amounted to a mass of 40% of the Treasury's annual income, or about 5% of British GDP. The loan was one of the largest in history. The UK, listen, 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 listen. The UK did not pay off the debt to slave owning families until 2015. Wow. The 20 million pounds today would be equivalent to 17 billion pounds. Mm -hmm. They owe you money, baby. Mm -hmm. They owe you. In summary, the British Isles have been inhabited by blacks for over 30,000 years. These blacks created a civilization in the United Kingdom. The evidence is clear that Cromwell sent most of the black Britons to the Caribbean as slaves. These Bolitonacs were not indentured servants. Don't let them tell you that lie. When they sent those black people, they wanted, what did Cromwell say, to be perpetually, forever slaves. They didn't expect you to come back. <laughs> they didn't expect you to come home. They thought you was going to stay in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm.
Cromwell made these black slaves so he could steal their land and, and pacify Ireland and Scotland. Okay, you can uh, find out more about uh, Foundation of Black Britons in my book, Blacks in Europe. Uh, my book, The World History of the Black Race and Manufactured Genetic Origins, The Fake Eurasian Back Migration. You can buy all of these books at uh, Amazon.com. You know, children need to have these books. Our children, your children need to know about their African history. Absolutely. They need to know about the civilization of Africa. Mm -hmm. My uh, African history primer, this is a nice book. It's got questions. You know, you can use this in a charity school to teach your children about our African history. Mm -hmm. You can use the book, Blacks in Europe, to teach them about their European history. Again, if you want to get copies of these slides, go to my Patreon to see the slides. My Twitter is at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. I got 200 films on all aspects of Black and African history on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And remember, you can order my books at Amazon.com. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Winters, for that deeply insightful presentation. Wow, wow, wow. You know, it was so emotional. What a journey. What a journey. And uh, that was just us listening to what happened to the Black Irish, much less, you know, even beginning to think about what they must have suffered and what they must have gone through. And, um, you know, I want to ask you in the chat, how many of you actually were aware of that history? You know, most of us have been taught the history of enslavement and the Africans that were taken from the continent of Africa itself. But how many of us knew about the Africans that had been emptied uh, from Scotland, Ireland and England around the same time? You know, how many of us knew of the hundreds of thousands of Africans that had been massacred or had been sent to perpetual enslavement uh, in the Caribbean? Which is why, as you say in Dr. Winters today, even in Jamaica, you've got Irish town, you've got uh, other towns with Irish names, you've got people with Irish names, because our ancestors, our Irish and our Scottish ancestors wanted to let us know where they were from and where we were from. And so what did they do? They named the towns and the places in, in Jamaica, in Barbados, in Montserrat, and even in America after the towns and places in Ireland. But it's only now that we're connecting the dots and beginning to realize what the significance was, was and is of those names of Irish places and Irish towns in those Caribbean islands and in the Americas. Wow. And, you know, you talked about the dress and the cladding as well. When you look at the Irish cladding and you look at the kente cloth in Africa, you can see the link there as well, the checks and the squares. You can see the link and the way that the Scots wear the kilts, the skirts, they call them kilts. But in Africa, you know, you've got the, the chiefs, the nanas and others who wear the skirts in Africa and they throw the bit of cloth over their shoulder, don't they? Well, they've all been copying that style. Even the Romans copied that style where they had, you know, the skirts and, and the material thrown over their shoulders. They've always been copying us. And someone said uh, in the chat, uh, when you were talking about the coat of arms, how they've stolen our identity. That is so true. When they empty, Scott, because you, you mentioned uh, McKay, actually, the book uh, by John McKay, who talks about the complexion of the Jacobites. And notice that these Jacobites were lords. They were dukes, the Duke of Somerset, the Duke of this, the Duke of that, the Duke of York. Our African ancestors were the original dukes and the original lords and the original rulers of all these counties and towns. And they were the original people who sat in the houses of parliament as well. And um, as difficult as it is to imagine that this is what we did to each other, you know, just think of the Tutsis and the Hootsies and what they did to each other, how the Tutsis massacred the Hootsies and vice versa. 
you know, and to think that Paul Kagame, the current president of uh, Rwanda, you know, was instrumental in that genocide. Like you said, not all kinfolk, skin folk are kinfolk. But, you know, this is just phenomenal. Did I get some questions in the chat? Family, if you've got any questions in the chat, please post them. There's lots of points that are being made. Someone was asking, was asking about um, Stonehenge. And uh, they answer the questions. I know a lot of us know the answer, but I wonder if you could tell us about Stonehenge. They well, yeah. questions. Was it Africans that built Stonehenge? Yeah. Africans are building. If you get uh, if you get Massey's book, Massey explains how these uh, how Stonehenge was built by the original people who lived in uh, lived in Britain, the British Isles, and that was Africans. Uh, they were Phoenicians. Some of them were Phoenicians. Some of them were uh, were Egyptians. There was already earlier black folk. You got to remember that the Danans, the Danans, like in the uh, in the mythology of the Irish, the Danans go back to what? The Danans who who came from Egypt. See, you know, they always want to tell you. They always want to tell you, you're not related to the Egyptians. You're not related to nobody but but an ignorant person who came from a hut. I read to you. I read to you about the Irish slaves. Who were, in, who, were, who were in North America. And they said they were tradesmen. Just because just they made just because they made our ancestors till the fields. We didn't come over here stupid. That's Your right. ancestors didn't go to the Caribbean stupid. No way. See? And the thing is this is that many when they when they start when you start saying we were kings and then the white folks say, yeah you was kings. Now you mm -hmm. see a lot of us were. We were kings. We were dukes. We we're princes. Mm -hmm, you see, mm -hmm. they want to make it a joke. It's not a joke. But but a lot of this goes back to who? Marie Charles. Marie Charles made us revisit. Mm -hmm. She made us revisit our history. Oh, uh, we rise her up. We rise her up, Dr. Marie Charles. We had the privilege of having her on this platform a couple of months ago. Her video is among you know the library of uh, videos, the backlog of videos that I've got on this channel. If you haven't you know watched her video, family, I highly highly recommend that you do. Um, she's just re she's doing a phenomenal amount of works and bringing the evidence, the archaeological evidence to substantiate, you know, everything that, that we're talking about here. Uh, wow. But just imagine, uh, Dr. Clyde, that because of religion, you know, on the one hand, you had the Catholics, those of us who were Catholics. And on the other hand, you had those of us who were Protestants. Yeah. Now, most of us growing up here in England during the 70s would be aware of the, uh, the the war that was going on between the Protestants and the Catholics in Ireland. And we all thought that was a white war. We all thought they were fighting against each other. And here you had England, or who were the Catholics, and then Ireland, you've got the Protestants. This war is the same war that's been going on for centuries, that started with our ancestors. But what we did, we took it to the extreme, as we did with everything. And the Africans who were the Catholics massacred and sent into perpetual slavery the Africans who were Protestants to the extent that they weakened us so much that King William, you showed us, could just march in and take over, take the lot. Yeah. And see, what, what makes it so bad is this, is that <clears throat> it demonstrates why it's so important to be B1. Why it's so important? Yes. You cannot. You can never avoid your nationality. For example, my uh, my uh, my mother on my mother's side they were Choctaw Choctaw Native Americans. My father's side they go back to the Vientos. They were slaves, and yet and yet I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be trying to always want to go out and, and get a hatchet and, and try to scalp somebody. I'm not going to go out with a gun and try to stick up nobody. I am B one. I'm black first. I'm going yes. back to my African ancestry. Mm -hmm. African ancestry. Mm -hmm. That African ancestry, it unites us all no matter what our heritage is. Ashe. And this is why we had to be B1. Ashe. We had to be B1. We had to look to this African heritage. And mm -hmm. people say, okay, but you're in Britain now. So what? Mm -hmm. I'm in America. So what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all go back to Africa. I didn't say white folks don't come from Africa. Don't mm -hmm. let nobody tell you white folks came from Africa. 
Mm-hmm. Those Asians didn't come from Africa. Mm-hmm. It was black people who came from Africa. That's right. Don't yes. ever, don't ever believe the hype. Mm-hmm. Don't ever believe the hijack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, a hijack. But see, the thing is this is that we always, we've always been conditioned not to read. We always been conditioned, you know, the, the, the European always teaches you, don't be reading books. Black people don't read books. Mm-hmm. All you black people, y'all just keep on talking. Just talk with each other. Yeah. Go somewhere and dance. <laughs> yeah. Dan, dan, mm-hmm. Dance and talk. But we left many, we mm-hmm. left many inscriptions. We left many writings that tell our history. Yes. You know, in England, in England, what makes it so bad about the, uh, the, the Anglo-Saxons is that the Anglo-Saxons, you know, once Cromwell, once Cromwell, once Oliver Cromwell massacred and killed off most of the black people, and then the black people that didn't leave Britain after they started getting them some white women from the Turks, you know, they, you know, I mean, hey, you see the white man today in American Britain, they always trying to run to Russia to find them some white woman. But that's what they did back then too. But even though after they after they felt that they got rid of all the black folk, after they felt the other black folk had married white women and nobody could tell, Thomas Thomas Cromwell. You heard what they said. He destroyed 97 percent, 97 percent of the the art. art. And we can only begin to imagine what that artwork must have looked like, because, you know, these were highly skilled people. I mean, some of us have seen the images, you know, because this is around the time of the Moors, where you know, they called some of these Africans Moors. Uh, You know, these these lords and, and those in the higher echelons. You know, they gave themselves the title of Moors. And we've seen, you know, the Moorish buildings. We saw how lavishly they they um, dressed and their artwork and, and their houses and the gold gilded uh, cutlery and everything. I mean, we can't even begin to imagine the luxurious lifestyle that these Africans were actually living because there's nothing anywhere on the planet right now that lives up to the lifestyle of those Africans. But if you manage to glimpse a bit of the artwork here and there, you know, it takes your breath away. Like like, like Westminster Castle, Parliament. Those mm. buildings were designed. Designed. Yeah. And built, yes. And built by black people. That's right. You, That's you. right. And now, and, now, and now they have the nerve to tell you mm-hmm. that your child can't learn any damn thing. That's mm-hmm. a lie. Mm-hmm. They don't want to teach them. They mm-hmm. want to teach. I saw this thing yesterday. It was a documentary, and it was called uh, "Brown Babies," and it talked about the fact that a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know Afro American soldiers they they uh, they they uh, they had babies by white women. They, you know they wouldn't let they wouldn't let the black uh, soldiers marry any British women. You know, so they wouldn't let them bring their wives back. So a lot of these black kids, a lot of these black kids were really discriminated against. And this one girl, this one, well, she she's not a girl, she's older, she older than me. She about in her late, late 70s. And uh, she mentioned the fact that that when she was in school, that when she was going to school, they would put her in the back and they would let her just play with play with toys and stuff. And they wouldn't try to teach her. And 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 she said her teachers would try to tell tell the other kids to abuse her because she was darker, you know, mm-hmm. just because she's a little dark. See, those Anglo-Saxons are. Yes, they are. Stop! Stop cutting me off, Sister Shanice. Stop cutting. They are. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, Sister Shanice, she wasn't cutting me off. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. Was like, no, I'm sorry. You got me. And uh, I tried not to shout a lot too. We we love your emotion. We all need a lot more of it. You know, especially those of us here in Britain, where we've been taught to have the, the stiff upper lip and be emotionless and, you know, not to, to express ourselves too much. So we love the energy, you know, it's a it's a burst of fresh air. Let's go over to the chat and uh, pick out some of the questions. And Well, I, I'll just randomly see what we've got in here. So Kwame uh, Abogia. Welcome, welcome. He says, uh, Africans from Ireland that uh, migrated to America came from Dublin and Belfast. They didn't migrate. Now, they didn't migrate. 
They didn't migrate, mind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, were they didn't poor. migrate. They yeah. didn't go voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They made they, what they did is that if if you was if you wasn't a Protestant black, they made you a a slave, a chattel slave. This is in the writings of Oliver Cromwell. He made those black Catholics chattel slaves because he didn't expect he didn't expect you guys to go back to Britain. Come back. Just imagine if you look family, um, check out your family name. Check out if your family name has a crest. I've done it. See if you can find the crest for your family name. Then you'll know whether you came from Scotland or from Ireland or your name should be able to tell you that as well. I mean, the, the, the lies that we have been told, you know, they said that all of us came from Africa to the Caribbean or America as slaves. Well, it turns out that some of us did, but also that some of us actually came from England, Ireland and Scotland. And those of us that had, you know, our English, Irish or Scottish sounding names, as you said, they told us that we got those names from the so-called, you know, enslaver, the plantation owner. Well, researchers have found that in some cases, there were no plantation owners with the names that we have. So we didn't get the names from the plantation owners. Where did we get them from? And the evidence is proving that we went to these places with our names. Of course, we're all B1, we're all black first, we're all African first all of us first and foremost irrespective of where we were born and there's a big difference between you know our our origin and our nationality you know um a chinese person born in america is still a chinese person a chinese person born in britain is still a chinese person similarly an african born in america or an african born in britain is still an African. We are Africans. We are black first wherever we are in the world. And we have to unite on that basis because what this history that Dr. Clyde has just presented to us today clearly demonstrates is that we are our own worst enemy when we take up these religions and um, to the point where we become fanatical about it, to the point where we all lose everything. Imagine these. Africans were the rulers of England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales and they fought each other to the point where they were so weak others could just walk in and take over. Yeah. Now Dr. Winters. And, and just think about the fact is that the Protestants and the Catholics they all have Jesus. They all have Jesus Christ as their as their as their as their leader. They Actually, all say they, they, they worship God, Yahweh, you know, whatever. And yet, just to think about it, is that because of these religious differences, they could be so heartless, so mm. cruel. And mm. see, that's one of the reasons why today, you know, me and my wife, before she died, me and my wife, we stopped saying we belong to any religion. Mm. They, when we go to the doctor, they say, what well, believer? I believe in God. Because mm. see, religions, all religions do is separate people. They separate us. They separate us. It's only one God. And now if you could get if you could get those people to have that war that they had in England among the Catholics and the Protestants, and they both worship the, the same damn God. Mm, mm. Even today, God. we've got the situation where religion has messed us up as a people. S.A. Smith, welcome in the house, uh, says exactly religions have messed up many of us. Nothing wrong with having uh where's it gone with having morals and treating humans right but religions has made people cruel to others imagine murdering and committing genocide in the name of religion the, a religion that's supposed to be about love and oneness and wow 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 let's see what everyone else is saying in the chat uh go travel abroad is saying fire letting off lots of fire first time welcome say a way of controlling the population pharaoh welcome says my grandfather born in 1865 said his people were bought from england and ancestry sent me info about one of his female ancestors being brought to a virginia settlement Wow, wow, wow. Rise up, Ace99. Good to have you in the house as well. Adrian says, I couldn't believe it when I found a family crest with a black person on it from the 13th century with my surname. 
There you go, Barker. Everybody's got to do that research. And you, we are now back to reclaim our heritage. Right These people have stolen our identity. They've stolen our land. They've stolen where we live. Just imagine all those lords and uh, those black African lords and sirs and, and what else were they? Uh, dukes and the yeah. like. All their palaces, all their castles, you know, all of their property and what they owned uh, was then taken over, yeah, by people who basically um, started, who adopted their names, adopted their homes, adopted their titles, you know, and then probably painted new portraits of themselves and hung it on the wall to, to give the impression that they were, you know, the originators. No, when they destroyed the 97% or so of all of the African art, they then repainted them in their own image. And so today, you know, we're looking, when you look at the images of the earlier kings and queens of Britain, and you're seeing them with pale complexion, hmm, yeah. They weren't black prior to King James. I mean, they, they weren't white, rather. Prior to King James, they were all black. All William, black. King William. King William. Didn't you say he came in from, with, with his, his 14,000? Yeah. Was he black or white, King William? He was white. Yeah. His right. So prior white. to King William, they were all black. Yeah. yeah. See, but, but the thing is this, is that, you know, it, it's so easy. It's so easy for them to do the switch on us because... You know, most of us, most of us, as, as I as I began to say earlier, is that these people, once they had got rid of most of the uh, black people, ran us out, and the only black on the only other uh, black people were basically uh, you know uh, slaves or servants or whatever, or African African uh, diplomats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then they were able to, to to they didn't mind writing about in their books about how the original people were black. They never expected Sister Shanice. They never expected Clyde Winters. They never expected uh, Marie Charles. They never expected us to read those books because mm -hmm. they were going. They this is what this is what Cromwell said. He said, "I'm exiling these these uh, I'm exiling these black people, and they can never come back. You were mm -hmm. never supposed to come back. <laughs> well, you we're know? back. That's My right. big question is, um, yeah. Doctor Winters, is we've now heard what happened." to the original Baratanax. We've heard what happened to the Irish, the Scottish. What is to stop something like that happening again? These people were rounded up, put on ships and sent off to the Caribbean and the America as enslaved Africans. We are now returning, most of us totally ignorant of that history, totally unaware of what happened to our ancestors in the past. And we're coming back and we don't understand why they're introducing all of these immigration policies to try and keep us out. Why they're so determined to hide our history because they're claiming the land that was ours, that didn't belong to them. And they're claiming all of our assets. You know, our king, our castles, our palaces, our, we built this country, the foundations of it, we built it. And they're worried that we're going to find out that we were the original owners of this land and want it back. So, you know, most of us don't even realize the well, situation that we're in. Well, the good, the, good thing, the good thing is that uh, many white people are dying out. They're dying out even over in England. I was looking. I uh, I like to look at this doctor. He does a lot on the uh, on COVID, you know, and uh, and he he was bringing up all these unnatural deaths that are occurring among white folks. Mm -hmm. and so then they're going to die out because see, they got to rule for a little while, but no white civilization has lasted longer than two hundred years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're more hardy. We you know mm -hmm. yes, many 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 old black people in America died of COVID. But the majority of the majority of people didn't die of COVID. It was mainly white people who died of COVID in America, mm -hmm. and uh, and some and Spanish people. Mm -hmm. But see, the point is this: is that you are hardy people, mm -hmm. especially if you cover in the Caribbean. If you cover in the Caribbean, you are strong. We survived all of that. Yes, That's right. we are the fittest of the fittest. That That's survived. right, and, and and your children are fit too. So mm -hmm. yeah, they they may want to try to do this again. Yeah. But the point is this is that is that people had to fight back, people had to declare who they were. 
So they did that in secret. They had the black people see all white people are not evil. Most are. But uh, but the point is, this is that. So you had to be prepared to fight when you know who you are, when you have the confidence, when you have the, the self-esteem, then you will fight. I mean, just like the point is, this is that you're not supposed to be sitting in that chair. You're supposed to be somewhere, you know, in somebody's house cleaning their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're here trying to you're here, here trying to help awaken your people, awaken our people to who we are, what we are, and what we're capable of doing. Mm. The only thing that we've always had in our corner is this. They may have said that 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 God didn't love us. They may have said that we were, in a sense, that we were that we were punished by God. You see, that's a lie. Even when they they taught us growing up that the Hamites they were they were supposed to be the slaves of everybody else. Read the damn Bible. Don't say Hamites. It's they the Shemites. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. see. But the point is this: is that God, 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 God. They tried to exterminate us in 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 the Caribbean. They tried to exterminate us in Mississippi. But we're still here. We're still going strong. They can't stop you. They didn't. They didn't intend. They didn't intend on the wind rush people coming back to Britain. They didn't intend on them sending their kids to school. They didn't intend on those kids going to school and want to be somebody, baby. <laughs> but look, look at you now. Look at, you look now. at us now. Look at us now. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Look at us. Hey. They can't hold. Up. They can't hold you back. God decided. Down. You killed my people years ago. That's done with. Yeah. You're not doing it to my people again. Yeah. And, and that's why it's so important for us to have this knowledge of our history to ensure that it never happens again. Because unless we over our history and we learn from it so that we don't make the same mistakes again that we did in the past, we will not even realize that we're sleepwalking into a similar situation again. You said they're dying out. Nature is, is doing what it does you know it's thing and uh, the temperatures is going to get hotter and they're unable to take the sun and they're predicting all these cancers that's going to be taking them out but do you know what they need in order to survive our melanin so what are they promoting on the tell live vision here 24 7 in their magazines through their media mixed relationships they're encouraging our people to mix with them so they can get our dna so they can get our blood and our melanin because that's what they need to sustain us and uh if we fall for that family we are making a rod for our own back that's right and you said um in the presentation as well i can't remember exactly where it was uh, uh with the another contributory factor towards us dying out uh was the whitening process how so many of our people were marrying outside of their white race to the point where the at one point there was a significant number of those that they call mulattoes the mixed race and then there was a significant number of high color blacks who yeah. then would have turned to white once they married whites and, and see, we whiten ourselves out of existence and, and, that, and that's why and that's why a lot of people a lot of african people they 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 are uh, they'll get back their uh their, their dna test They'll say that they have uh, some European, mm -hmm. and then they try to tell you, they try to tell, oh, you got the European because the white man raped your grandma. Man, that's a damn lie. Listen, mm -hmm. the English, the English people did not Harley. They may, they may, they may rape that. They may have raped their black women, but they didn't keep that their babies be be around them because they didn't. They've always been afraid of being genetically annihilated. Yeah, yeah. See. They've always been afraid of being genetically annihilated. Mm -hmm. And see, just like they told you guys in the Caribbean that lie, that 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 you didn't have no ancestry, that you that that just because you had an Irish name or English name or a Scottish name, mm -hmm. that that came from your slave master. Now we know when you take that name back, you go to Britain, you look at those heraldic things, you see that you got a black ancestor. <laughs> Grand things in Britain. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.
<laughs> wow, wow, wow. As always, Dr. Winters, you have been absolutely phenomenal. You know, it's that time already. We are at the top of the hour. Uh, to everyone in the chat that's been contributing to this discussion, we thank you so, so much. Brother Kwame, Vanessa, Go Travel Abroad, to all of you, thank you so much. Kwame Otti says, whitening process in Australia, Canada, Brazil, Argentina, Panama, Uruguay, Peru, etc. Exactly, exactly. You know, this is what we do. You know, we whiten ourselves out of existence. This is why I don't get it when, you know, some say, um, you know, that we have the dominant gene. But those are, are right there are examples of, how our gene has just been whitened out. Yes, they may be able to find a fragment of our DNA in them when they get their um, blood samples done, but they're not us anymore. So family, family, as Marcus Messiah Garvey said, you know, we've got to put race first. Every other race puts race first. We've got to put race first and we've got to be black first. We've got to be one, you be know, one. wherever we are in the world, we've got be to one. be one. Because if we don't, it'll be another Catholic positive situation. If we don't, it'll be another Tootsie Hootsie situation. If we don't, it'll be a Nigeria Biafra situation. So we have to learn, you know, from the errors of our ways and be one, be first. Dr. Clyde Winters, thank you so much to everybody in the chat. How tearing myself away, you know, tearing myself away. But, um, you know, got to love you and leave you well over time now. Thank you all so much. Please do give us a thumbs up if you haven't already done so. Please do uh, click on the link for my questionnaire and fill it in if you haven't already done so. If you join Blake, just to let you know, if you fill in my questionnaire, your name will go into the hat and you could be the winner uh, of uh, my forthcoming book, okay? So I'm working on it to have it ready by the end of this month. If you put your, if you fill in that questionnaire, you could be the lucky winner of my book. So it's called uh, King Offer and King Offer is uh, or was a black Anglo-Saxon king. How many of you knew that we had black Anglo-Saxon kings? Anyway, family, give us a thumbs up. Please do share the video. Thank you so much for watching. Dr. Clyde Winters, as always, absolutely phenomenal. We love you lots. We love you lots. And you know I'm going to be trying to squeeze another date out of you. <laughs> what I'd like to do, what yeah. I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, I'd like to do, uh, I'd like to do a discussion of the Baradinac history from 1900 up to the present. But wow. I'll, I'll talk to you later about that. But uh, just, okay. you know, we'll get that set up because we want to have that continuation. We began with the uh, we began with the prehistory. Yeah. Then we talked about the Black Vikings. Now we talked about the return to uh, from from uh, the Caribbean. Next, yeah. I'd like to talk about you know uh, B you know FVB history from 1900 up to the present. So we'll awesome. talk about it later, maybe. Sounds great. Sounds great. We'll love that. We'll love that. Thank you so much. Family, stay strong, stay powerful. Do your research, learn your history, get the knowledge and share, share, share. Thank you all so, so much. Sister Shanice, out of here for now. Bye for now. Bye, Bye. for now.